In July of 2021, I started a job as a junior AWS DevOps engineer. I was attracted by all of the buzz and the positive aspects of the role posted online. But behind all the glitz and glamour, there are a few things that you have to be aware of. In this video, I'll go over a checklist of five things you need to accept before going into a DevOps career. First off, if you're not a fan of managing infrastructure, you're gonna struggle. Now, this is a big one. As a DevOps engineer, I spend a huge amount of time setting up, configuring, and maintaining the cloud infrastructure that supports various applications. This means dealing with servers, databases, networks, and security on a daily basis. Now, if this excites you, great. This role could be perfect. I still remember being blown away when I ran some Terraform code for the first time, and suddenly there was some infrastructure running in AWS. It felt like magic at the time, but it's not for everyone. If you're more into software engineering, writing Terraform, CI-CD pipelines, and automation scripts may not scratch that coding itch for you. It isn't quite the same as building a real customer-facing application, and it may not feel like you're fully flexing that coding muscle enough. Take a look at these Reddit posts from engineers that talk about their experience transitioning from software engineering to DevOps. It's just boring and not fulfilling at all compared to full-stack software engineering. I feel like I'm not exercising the part of my brain that gets exercised when I'm coding. I just like coding more working on a product, building something, and seeing it materialize and being used by end customers. As it turns out, a lot of other engineers also agree with this. If you're more interested in coding and software development, the day-to-day -day task of managing infrastructure may feel like a distraction from your true passion. Plus, being a DevOps engineer involves staying up to date with the latest infrastructure trends, tools, and best practices. If you're not passionate about this, you might find it difficult to keep up, which might hold you back in your career. Having said that, there's plenty of examples of people transitioning from software engineering to DevOps and vice versa. So don't think that you're locked in if you decide to choose one. Now, if you do decide to pursue DevOps engineering, you also have to get used to constantly learning new things. The DevOps ecosystem is huge and constantly evolving. Tools and frameworks that were popular yesterday may be replaced by new alternatives. On top of your regular job as an engineer, you probably need to give up some of your free time for studying. For me, when I was first starting out on my current role, I definitely felt overwhelmed with the amount that I needed to know. I spent evenings and weekends studying technologies, revising for certifications, and playing around with AWS. After speaking to some more senior colleagues, let me tell you, even as you gain more experience, the learning doesn't stop. Now, if this excites you, then great, this role will be suited for you. In fact, it's commonly noted as one of the things that DevOps engineers love most about their job. When asked about what is the most exciting thing about being in DevOps, this Reddit user says it's the fact that they're learning a lot. And I think this links in quite well with the previous point I mentioned. When you have a genuine passion for these technologies, learning becomes second nature. On the other hand, if things like infrastructure, deployments, and networks don't really spark your interest, it can be a real struggle to motivate yourself to study. With the pace of development and introduction of AI tools like ChatGPT, DevOps engineering today won't be the same as DevOps engineering two or three years from now. Now, still with me? Consider this. As a DevOps engineer, you also have to deal with unrealistic expectations. DevOps is hot right now. Businesses expect to hire a few engineers and magically all of their problems go away. So there can be a tendency for management to overlook the complexities and time required for certain projects. As a DevOps engineer, you'll be responsible for managing these expectations and balancing them in a more realistic way. Businesses want a lot from these teams and often there aren't enough people for all the tasks. So be prepared to work against tight deadlines and manage competing priorities. Now, on the plus side, this means that there's always work to do. Personally, I found this to be one of the biggest advantages to the role. Although it's nice to kick back and relax, you'll quickly get bored if there aren't any tasks for you. Especially as a junior engineer, you want to get involved in lots of things and grow your skill set. A large backlog also means that you get a bit more choice in what particular tasks you want to do. Interested in Kubernetes, for example, then pick up a few Kubernetes tickets in the backlog. Aside from the technical work, you also need strong communication skills. DevOps engineers often need to work closely with different teams, including developers, operations, finance, and other stakeholders. You'll need to act as a partner to these teams, explaining the challenges and limitations involved in projects and help them set realistic timelines and expectations. And this is something that I didn't really appreciate until I actually started working. I thought that, you know, 100% of my time will be spent on development and the rest will be taken care of some product owner or scrum master. Don't get me wrong, your technical skills are probably going to be the most important thing to your success, but don't underestimate the importance of these soft skills. If this hasn't scared you off, then consider whether you're prepared to deal with a general overestimation of your technical capabilities. Now, on top of the unrealistic time expectations, it's possible that people also have unrealistic expectations of your technical knowledge. You may only have surface level knowledge of certain tools, but still be considered a subject matter expert by other people in your company. 
The truth is, it's nearly impossible to truly be an expert in every technology. This kind of recognition can be flattering, but it can also be a bit overwhelming. As a junior engineer, I felt the pressure to have all the answers to every question. I was afraid that if I didn't know, you know, absolutely everything, people would see me as incompetent. But guess what? It's not realistic and it can actually lead to more problems. For example, one of my friends working for a large company received a message from one of his colleagues asking for help with a database issue. My friend wasn't a database specialist, but he wanted to be helpful and wanted to be seen as knowledgeable. In the end, his suggestion actually caused more problems and set the team back another day. This just shows that as a junior DevOps engineer, you're kind of in this catch-22 situation. You want to be seen as dependable, but it's unrealistic to have expert level knowledge in every technology. Now, I've talked to senior colleagues about this this issue. It doesn't really go away the more experience you get. You just get better at handling it. Now, let's talk about something you'll have to face every day, changing your focus. You're working on one of your tickets and everything's going great. You're focused and in the zone when suddenly, can you help me troubleshoot this DynamoDB error? Urgent, system down. Hey, are you free for a quick three hour meeting after work? Now, don't get me wrong. Distractions are part of most jobs. So this isn't necessarily unique to DevOps. My point is more to not expect your day to turn out exactly like you've planned. DevOps engineers work across multiple tools, technologies, and interact with many, many teams. So you often get pulled into a lot of different tasks. This could include jumping in an emergency meeting, troubleshooting a bug, or fixing an incident. It's possible that these tasks could pull you away from your original work for multiple days. This constant context switching can make it feel like you're trying to juggle a dozen balls at once. So it can be challenging to maintain your productivity and achieve the level of quality that you strive for in your work. A natural side effect of this is that sometimes your company may take your attention away from things that they don't see as important. For example, automating manual tasks. A Reddit user here says that they had to sell my boss a 20 hour Terraform task that would otherwise take our team about 20 minutes of manual clicking in the cloud management website and that his boss struggled to understand why it was important. But his brain took an hour, giving us that look of pure confusion. Why would you spend 20 hours automating something that takes 20 minutes? And this seems to be quite a common observation. Sometimes the core DevOps work doesn't have as much obvious business value compared to releasing, let's say, a shiny new feature. This means that you may have to fight your own case as to why these tasks are important to work on. It's worth noting that, yes, although constantly changing tasks can be a challenge, they also present great opportunities for growth. Handling multiple tasks in a short amount of time really, really accelerates your learning. Let's not forget that these multitasking skills can also be developed over time. So don't treat this as a sort of make or break issue. So with all this in mind, should you become a DevOps engineer? To be honest, I think it comes down to a few key factors. If you're someone that's passionate about infrastructure, comfortable with constantly learning new things and enjoys the unpredictability and unstructuredness of the job, then this would be a great career choice for you. Throughout the video, it may seem like I'm trying to convince you not to be a DevOps engineer. In fact, I've been an AWS DevOps engineer for the past two years and I love it. I love the technical challenge and the opportunity to work on lots of different cool areas in tech. For me, the positives definitely, definitely outweigh the negatives. But I do think when you research the role online, the pros are highlighted more than the cons. Hopefully, this video has served its purpose to somewhat balance the discussion and give you some points to think about. If this video has been useful to you, please consider subscribing. As a small content creator, it really does help.